Hello! In this module, we're going to take a look at the steps a reviewer must go through when doing a double-blind pre-review in a Node.js journal. For reviewers who are just watching this one video here today, welcome! I hope you find these steps easy and straightforward. For the rest of you who are working your way through all the videos in the course, you'll recall that we previously watched how the section editor assigned the pre-reviewers. Now, we're switching over to what the reviewers see. For this example, we'll follow Luis Ramirez, who will work his way through the reviewer steps. He received an email via OJS from the section editor inviting him to do the review, and he has decided to accept. The first thing that he needs to do is to log in to the system using the username and password that was provided earlier. Now, if he couldn't remember his password, he could hit the forgot your password link to put in his email and reset the password. If he has forgotten what the username is or didn't remember what email was used, he needs to contact the editor directly. Let's put in the password and hit on login. This immediately jumps us into his dashboard. There's a very limited view of the internal workings of OJS for a reviewer. All we can see is a list of assigned submissions. Right now, he only has one to work with. If you look up to the notifications icon, there's a little number three because he has three pending tasks. Here we can see the response due date. This is just the date by which he needs to let the editor know whether he'll do the review or not. And then he has another date to actually complete the review. These dates could vary depending on the journal's workflow setting. We have also got a little warning sign saying that the journal is waiting for us to let them know whether we'll do it or not. Let's view our assignment. First, you can see the request for review. This is the message that we received asking us if we could review the submission. Then you have the article's title and abstract, the review type, and the review schedule with all the important dates. In the last section of this page, the system requires us to disclose any potential competing interests for this review. If we have any, we can select that option and disclose it in the text below. The last thing the reviewer has to do here is to agree to have his data collected according to the privacy statement. Now he can click on Accept Review and continue to step number two. Now we can see some reviewer guidelines. The journals can add whatever they think is most appropriate for helping you provide the kind of review they're looking for. There might be some instructions on the kinds of response they're looking for. So it is important to read through all of these and make sure you understand what you're being asked to do and then continue to step three. Here we can see the review file. Clicking on it will download it into our computer. You can reread the reviewer guidelines by clicking on the next link. If the journal has a specific review form for this section, the form would appear here for the reviewers to fill it in. Then you'll see the two most important boxes for the reviewer. In the first one, you can type in the review that's going to be visible for both the author and the editor. So make sure you don't name yourself or in any way make your identity known because you want to stick to the blind review process. Now, the second box is just for the editor. The author will never see what goes in this box. So maybe you might want to be a little bit more direct about some of your concerns. If you are somebody who likes to mark up the document using the track changes, you could do that and then upload the file here. You want to make sure we're always preserving the anonymity of any files that are shared back and forth. We're not going to upload anything here. You can also add a discussion using the Add Discussion button if you need to share any comments or questions with the editor or section editor. In the last section, you can select a recommendation. Here we can accept the submission as is, but you can also ask for revisions if you think that there are some minor changes that should be made, resubmit for review means 
that there are major changes that need to be made and the changes are so big that it should come back for another round of review. Resubmit elsewhere means that this is a good article, but it doesn't really fit into the scope of this journal. You can choose decline if you think there's just no chance for this ever meeting the quality of the journal. Or see the comments if you just can't make up your mind and you want to send a message to the editor. Let's choose revisions required. And then submit the review. Confirm. We cannot go back and change our recommendation. So you really want to be 100% sure before confirming. Now you can read a message thanking you for completing the review and can add a further discussion if you need to. I really hope you find this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.